Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Throne of Grace. Beloved family, our text says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone. And its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Psalms 103, 13 to 19. Over 100 years ago, Milton Bradley, the American business magnate and game pioneer who later sold his company to Hasbro, created the popular board game called The Game of Life. Today, there's another popular game set as a drama television series called Game of Thrones, where noble families either vying for the throne or fighting for independence from whoever sits on it. And the purpose of this seed today is to remind us that life is no game and neither is the throne. The throne symbolizes kingship, rulership, and dominion. And although the enemy, Satan, dictators and rulers in the earth want us to believe that we are in a game of thrones, but the truth is there is only one who sits on the throne, and at his name, every knee. That includes Satan's knee, dictator's knee, king's or queen's knee, president and every prime minister's knee shall bow before our King Jesus and they will all open their mouths and confess that he alone is Lord, owner of every throne, including theirs. So as life is no game, neither is the battle for the throne. Moses said in Deuteronomy 6.13, Fear the Lord your God, serve him only, and take your oaths in his name. And King Jesus, the one who sits on the throne, gave confirmation to Satan, the one who is fighting for the throne, when he said, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Luke 4, 8. In our opening text today, King David is giving us the context of the throne of God versus people on the earth. He says, God knows how we were formed. He remembers that we are dust. Ah, uh, permit me to just park here for a moment. Many of us think that we are all that. We got it all going on. High paying job, title, a little name, some respect, money and success. We feel like we're untouchable, that the gated areas we live in or the excluded country club access somehow protects us. But God reminds us we are all just dust and that the life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower in the field. The wind blows over it and it's gone. Now let that sink in for a moment, especially for those playing games of thrones or games of life, or should I say games in life. Lying to the people and political posturing to gain power or stay in power so that they can hold on to the access to their ivory towers in life. But our text says the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. All kingdoms, all things, all thrones came over. I want you to see and realize that the thrones of men in the earth and of Satan alike. David says, can a corrupt throne be allied with you, God? A throne that brings on misery by its decrees? Psalm 94, 20. No corrupt throne can be allied with God. They are all opposed to him 
Why? It's because his throne is established in righteousness, and hence all of the other thrones stand in judgment. David declared, the Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment, Psalm 9, 7. And Samuel prophesied that his kingdom will endure forever and his throne will be established forever. Samuel 7, 60. Listen to me. Men may be playing games, but God is not. All of these governments and thrones around the world must be righteous. That means in right standing with the almighty God and King. For righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Ah, that means there is no middle ground, no gains. There are two causes, each with its own effect. The throne will be either hot in righteousness or cold in sin. Help me, Father God. For those lying to stay in power or lying to get in power, realize that their father Satan is a liar. He is the father of lies, and there is no truth in him. This is the game he plays with your life and with my life. He's lying to people in the earth right now. He has no power other than manipulation by lying. That is, if we let him. But King Jesus Christ is the truth. He is king, and he is Lord. So family, no more playing games. No more games of thrones. For I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. So let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Much love.